Say Hotep Varagani to my Africana uh, studies uh, crowd, colleagues, and contemporaries and seekers after the truth all. And let me hasten to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, but certainly never good night and never ever goodbye because I have always found goodbyes traumatizing, especially as I go to so many funerals of my friends, acquaintances, and loved ones. Uh, my name is the Reverend Nathaniel Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of Los Angeles. And uh, <clears throat> we're located at 8916 uh, South Main Street, being hosted by our sister church, the Shiloh Missionary Christian Church, which is pastored by my good friend, the Reverend Dr. Della F. Hollandis. Anytime you feel uh, Led, come on in. Uh, we like to see your face in the place. You don't even have to do nothing. I'm happy just to see you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, this broadcast, this offering rather, this episode, uh, is a, a social justice offering, and it's just a little something in your week uh, to pull you back from the far country. Uh, by social justice, we mostly try to uh, zero in on the environment and the economics. Those are the two that claim most of our attention because, uh, hey, they just claim most of our attention, your environment, uh, what you do to the environment, and what the environment does to you. Uh, as the uh, uh, former director of the Louisville, former medical director for, of, of Louisville said, uh, your your zip code can determine uh, your lifespan. Think about that. Uh, <clears throat> let me read our scriptural uh, moorings or anchors so that we will have something to go from, all right? All right, Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, begin picking up verse 8 and, and uh, following up with verse 12. It says, Because thou hast spoiled many nations, Nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Verse 12, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. And then uh, we want to uh, go from there to the... Uh, Book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 6 and verse 12. Looks like my little phone is going to let me down. Uh, but verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, uh, <clears throat> against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The word of God for the people of God. Uh, may God have a blessing to those of us who not only love his word but also obey uh, his word and uh, follow and love him. Amen. All right. And so with those two scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, uh, we confront two things. One, both of them warnings, uh, a warning to the wicked and uh, regardless of how the wicked may manifest themselves, uh, because sometimes we can become the wicked uh, without our realizing it. Uh, just because uh, our intention is right doesn't mean that we are actually uh, doing right. <coughs> God bless. And so we have to uh, uh, search ourselves and, and investigate ourselves and analyze our motives uh, for the things that uh, we do. Uh, as long as I have been uh, in the Christian faith, I never thought I would uh, be against uh, Israel. But this Israel, of course, is not the uh, spiritual Israel of the Bible. Uh, but this Israel is a political uh, construction organization and it has uh, acceded to itself and uh, arrogated to itself all of the prerogatives of the Israel of the scripture but uh, I must 
protest. I don't. I'm not. I'm not in favor of of no genocide and no fratricide and no infanticide. And uh, I wouldn't have been in favor of the extermination of the Indians here in America. And I certainly am not exter in favor of the extermination of the people uh, of the a, 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 a uh, civilization and er erasure of a people uh, simply because uh, Jerry Kushner wants to have beachfront property uh, to sell. No, I, I can't go along with that. Uh, miss me with that. I can't hold up. I can't bless you with that. Uh, we got to either do right and start out right. And when we get wrong and if somebody telling you you're wrong, then you got to be able to uh, make amends, make correction. Don't keep going on in that same way, telling us like a blockhead that you know what you're doing. And we see what you're doing. Uh, you are uh, asking us to suspend judgment. And you're asking, you're telling us that we are crazy uh, when we tell you that you are committing genocide and murder and all of those uh, negative. All right, uh, so that's in Habakkuk. Uh, Woe to the man that builds a town by by uh, blood, uh, blood and by and a city by violence, and the uh, New Testament. Uh, says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So don't just look at Donald Trump and don't just look at the uh, uh, physical human manifestations of the federal government. Remember, you were involved in a, a system scheme, as it were. And uh, this uh, system is doing what it's supposed to do. It's working just like it's supposed to work. And... Uh, we have been too slow to recognize uh, that we have been uh, beguiled and deceived and that many of the things that we took for granted we should not have taken uh, for granted. I have a few notes here that I wanted to uh, read into the record, read into your hearing, uh, read into this uh, system here. Uh, over at uh, Miracle Productions here at KTYM uh, Media on a Friday evening. All right. Uh, we must admit that Donald Trump is an exist existential threat, and that means he's dangerous for our very existence. Uh, he poses a, a, he jeopardizes our existence. Uh, he poses a, a, a threat, and now he is in power, and uh, we have been uh, not idle, but we, we, we did not prevent uh, him to proceeding back into uh, power. Or it says here that Donald Trump will begin the process of dismantling the ability for an opposition to run an opposition through him. Uh, de deportation will be speeded up, as he has said, and he will begin to deconstruct the federal government. Uh, for instance, the FBI, which is the agency that's supposed to in, in do the background investigation on all uh, nominees to, the, to high office, but now they're going to go around the FBI. Now we'll go through the FBI no more because the FBI has investigated Donald Trump. And so Trump is going to bring in what you call uh, outside uh, private uh, entities. Oh, Lord, where have you heard that before? Amen. It's private entity. Somebody, the private enterprise can do it better, but until it doesn't. Uh... Our Lord, uh, George G.W. Bush going to run uh, the federal government like Ken Lay ran Enron. And how did that go? Uh, when you hear the name of Matt Gates uh, being floated as the next 
Department of Justice Attorney General, you should not be outraged, but you should be uh, instead take notice, be on your guard. Uh, when somebody put votes for the Fox to take over the hen house, you know things ain't right. Uh, which brings me to another uh, thought, thinking about Matt Gates becoming the Attorney General of the United States, highest law officer in the land. Uh, look at Matt, Matt Merrick Garland. Uh, uh, Merrick Garland had one year from the time he was appointed and accepted the position to begin the prosecution of Donald Trump for his crime, but he dragged his feet. Uh, by the time he began the prosecutions, the defense had already began watching two things. One, the calendar, uh, because there are only 30 calendar days in a month. And uh, the other thing they were watching was the clock, because the clock kept ticking. And uh, Mary Garland kept uh, delaying uh, announcing the prosecution. Uh, he was rather slow even on the January 6th uh, prosecution. But thankfully, he did start those, and they did get uh, some serious uh, convictions of the uh, Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and the like. And, but look how many uh, other of our fellow citizens were caught up uh, in that net. And a lot of them, none of them were what, you call, what we would normally call uh, the lower classes. No, these were uh, certificated, uh, educated uh, members. Some of them were members of uh, law enforcement. Uh, some of them were uh, in uh, education. And uh, some of them were in other uh, high positions all across this country. But they came to Washington, D.C. to overthrow the election. And uh, a lot of, uh, not all of them have been uh, uh, brought before justice, the court of justice yet. And some of them are already out. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, but now Trump is the president again. That's the part I want to get to because that's what affects us the most. And, at, and all the cases and convictions are going to be going away. Uh, with Matt Gates as the boss of the Department of Justice, uh, that's going to filter down from the top and, and whatever he says is going to go, just like uh, Matt, Matt, Mary, Mary Garland. Uh, and so he's going, if, if, Mary, if uh, Matt Gates says, uh, slow down the uh, uh, investigation on this case or that case, it's going to be slowed down. It ain't going to be no, because uh, Matt Gates controls them paychecks. That's the, the boss. And uh, even, if, even though he's only in the federal government, uh, a lot of uh, state and local cases wind their way up uh, the line. Some of them uh, to go before the U.S. Supreme Court as a final remedy. And so uh, what do you think, Matt Gates? Uh, he, like he was uh, being accused of uh, having sex with underage, underage girls. You think he going to uh, speed that case up? No. He going to do what? Quietly let that case go away. You won't, be, you won't hear about it. You won't hear the case number. You won't hear nothing about it uh, because he is what? The top dog in the land. All right, he got the big gun. Okay. Uh, uh, let me get pick up where I was. Okay, all of those cases against Donald Trump is what I was going to say will be slow tracked or overturned or dismiss. Uh, the Georgia cases, which was a state case under Fannie Willis, uh, will be dismissed, if not straight out overturned. Uh, D.A. Fonnie Willis will be fired. If there are any convictions, they will be 
pardon or commuted because Donald Trump is a president and the president can commute, he can give pardons, uh, and it, those pardons cannot be called into question. They, they're above the Supreme Court, they're above the uh, Congress, and all, all of that. So uh, Trump is the man, he's, he's in the catbird seat. Uh, those 34 felony uh, convictions in New York will go away due to presidential pardons. You think the president not going to pardon himself? Uh, and then all of those uh, cases against the uh, people who were convicted of January 6th uh, of, 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 of going against, uh, climbing, uh, climbing up the walls and entering to the uh, 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 state capitol. Uh, nation's capital, rather, unannounced and uh, plundering, and uh, what are, what are all of those convictions are going to be what reversed, are going to be pardoned or commuted uh, because uh, Donald Trump is the president and Matt Gates is now the uh, is going to well right he's not today but after January twentieth he will be the top dog in the Justice Department. And so uh, even Letitia James and uh, Jack Smith have already uh, started uh, moving those cases back off the docket uh, because the man they were prosecuting is the President of the United States now. And the, uh, uh, the uh, Supreme Court of the nation, U.S. Supreme Court, under John Roberts with uh, uh, Clarence Thomas and... Uh, and all, it all, uh, have given him uh, immunity, absolute immunity, according to them, because he's the top officer in the land. You see where this is headed? See where we're going? Uh, we are in a terrible way. All right. Uh, I have no doubt that Merrick Garland and the entire Department of Justice knew that the hand they had that they could have won if they had merely filed in time. In other words, filed those cases in time, but they didn't do that. Uh, this was a win for white supremacy. It was foreseeable, it was preventable, and, and it was avoidable. Uh, just as the North winked at the South in 1877, uh, when the uh, compromise was made that uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, settle the presidential race uh, uh, that year, the guy's name escapes me right now, uh, that uh, the, uh, the uh, compromise was made that uh, if this guy, if they would let this guy become president, then he would remove all the North federal troops out of the South and that the South uh, could handle the Negro problem from then on as, as, as they uh, should so please. And you know how that turned out. Okay. Uh, one of the guys was named Tilden, but the other fellow's name is, is what is escaping me. Uh, but they made an agreement, and uh, one became vice president, and the other became the uh, president. I think Tiller must have became vice president because the other guy. Uh, uh, I'll give up on. I'll, I'll give up on. It. Somebody, somebody will call and tell me tonight uh, how I messed up that uh, U.S. history. But it was pivotal because once the uh, federal troops were moved out, then of course all of the vitriol and all of the animus and all of the hostility and all the pent up uh, ferocity that the uh, uh, Confederacy, which had been defeated, true enough, uh, had been harboring, had been, uh, had, as it were, pent up, uh, was uh, unleashed against uh, those who had been formerly enslaved. And uh, it became a a a, a bloodbath uh, against uh, 
the uh, Negroes or the colors or the blacks, which we are still uh, trying to climb out from under. And with this election here, it looks like uh, white supremacy has won again. Uh, let me pick up my reading. Okay, just as the North winked at the South in 1877 and said, we will let you handle the Negro problem from here on, so the Merritt Garlands and the Giulianis of our country have dealt with us. It was rigged from the beginning. The black women of the Democratic Party feel they were betrayed by the 53% of white women who who said they were going to vote for Harris, but they voted instead uh, for Donald Trump. Uh, and the 45% of Latinas and Latinos who said they were going to vote for Harris, but instead voted for, for Trump. All right, it seems that people are okay with racism, that people are okay with misogyny that people are okay with gender bias and etc. cetera. Uh, they have decided to pay the price. America has finally, re finally removed the mask and the veil. Uh, we had a chance as a nation to pass down a better, a better world, a safer uh, world, a cleaner world, but we decided not to. Uh, America will always tell you what she wants. America is the cause of Trump and not vice versa. America is like Pontius Pilate washing his hands. Again, black women feel betrayed by the Democratic white women as well. And uh, uh, let me say uh, as we go on through, all of that... Uh, uh, Republicans for Harris. Well, that was just a charade. It was BS. It was never meant to be. Uh, it got the people hope up and inspired and everything like that. But it was not genuine. It was not real. It was falsehood. And uh, we took the bait, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, was fully up to speed because it looked like she was very enthused because uh, they were having those big crowds, but they weren't crowds necessarily for coming to see Kamala Harris. It were crowds were coming to see Usher, crowds coming to see uh, uh, Beyonce, crowds coming to see uh, Taylor Swift and all of those other uh, stars that she had uh, with her. And so they were able to fill up these arenas and get these massive crowds, but it did not translate into people voting for Kamala Harris on November 5th. And so there have been a deception, uh, whether they were willingly deceived or, uh, or whether they were just, uh, that naive, which I cannot, uh, see that a, a uh, seasoned uh, politician would be that naive to think that these people are coming out to see me and that they're going to vote for me. Uh, but of course, you know, when you've got your, your, your personnel and your staff working that crowd and getting in that crowd and uh, putting them signs up saying applaud now and say yeah now and and shout Kamala now, you know, because none of those things are spontaneous uh, anymore. Uh, I just don't, uh, don't buy that. Buy that was a lot of duplicity. There was a lot of duplicity all around. And uh, a lot of deceit that was practiced uh, that should not have been uh, practiced. That people that knew better, who could have said better, uh, instead uh, kept their mouths shut. And as a result, we are left with this uh, betrayal, which we should have seen coming, this deceit uh, that was uh, foreseeable. I wish I could get an amen on that. <laughs>
And uh, uh, let me say, let me pick up my reading right here. Again, black women feel betrayed by Democratic uh, white women as well as the Republican women for Harris. Uh, must remember, it was 400,000 black women that got on a Zoom call uh, to jumpstart uh, the Harris campaign. And uh, they were serious. Now, they raised four to five million dollars to get that thing started, but yet it was not enough. True that. Uh, and the uh, excuses are now being made. Five? All right. All right. Excuses are now being made. But if you notice, even in the, uh, the uh, state of Michigan, where the, the black Muslims said they were not going to vote for Harris because that genocide was a, uh, was a red line. Uh, even in Michigan, uh, the pro-Israeli woman who represents that, that state, uh, what was her name? Her name was Elisa Slotkin. Even I got notifications to send money for Elisa Slotkin because I didn't send no money and I didn't know who that was. But now I know who it was. Okay, but she got, she won, but Harris lost. What did that tell you? Even in the state that said that we don't agree with the genocide, they voted for the pro-Israeli representative, but they wouldn't vote for uh, Kamala Harris for president. What did that tell you? And then in Arizona, uh, Ruben Gallegos uh, won, but Harris lost. Okay. Hmm? So you got to conclude that Harris's first problem was her biggest problem. One, that she was a woman. And then the next thing, that she was a black woman. And she, she, she lives in a nation that was not going to let a woman, especially a black woman, ascend to that uh, high office. Uh, we should have recognized that when we saw Hillary Clinton uh, defeated by Donald Trump. Uh, and now we have Kamala Harris defeated by a convicted felon. Uh, as, as, as an aside, remember that there are law enforcement personnel who voted for a convicted felon rather than a innocent DA. Kamala Harris has never been convicted of any type of crime in her life, and she lost. Whereas Donald Trump has done everything under the sun. He probably has committed murder. We just don't know about it. Uh, and all of these things, people took into the voting booths with them, all of this knowledge. Uh, they knew of his uh, uh, proclamations or uh, declarations that uh, how he had mistreated women and that he had uh, paid off a, a porn star in the uh, 2016 election so that his uh, encounters with her would not uh, hurt his chances to become president and he, he, he overcame that but then it came back to bite him on the butt and he had the, the well publicized case on television and, and he lost the case and uh, all of that but instead of that uh, the people chose him <laughs> Whereas the, the female prosecutor, the female district attorney, the female senator uh, was rejected. What is that telling you? That is telling you something about America that you may as well recognize. Uh, America is a misogynistic nation. And they don't think that, we do not think that value, we don't value women that highly. Uh, because if we had, here was a perfect woman as far as that goes uh, that we could at least argue with about uh, stopping that, stop sending them that armament to uh, Israel. But the people chose who they chose. All right, 
and he's putting in his people as quick as possible. And uh, it looks dim going forward because when you got somebody who is a convicted felon, who is now president of the United States, well, what does that do for the, all the rest of the people who are, you know, minor felons? And but yet you can't get a job. You can't get you can't get a state job. He got the highest job in the world. And that type of thing. And uh, that's not going to sit well uh, with millions of uh, convicted felons. It wouldn't sit well with me. And I ain't no convicted felon. But uh, you see the way the country is going. And uh, I got to hurry on out of here. So I'm going to wrap it up and tell you if you're working on a job and they don't want to pay you, don't waste your life. Don't get caught in a trap of living paycheck to paycheck. If they don't want to pay you what you work while you're young, take my advice and don't work for them. Thank you, Doc. We out of here.